Okay, so I'm going to start with the good news. Um, here's a video of a, of a happy child and a happy mom after it was working. Uh, that was today. And so I'll start with that and then we'll, we'll, we'll work back from there. We'll go we'll back to the tragedy. Yeah. Hello, my name is Lady Ada. Can you and I be hackers? Super fun. Oh, okay. So, uh, Lady Ada. Okay. How'd you get? So you you <laughs> bought this Teddy Ruxpin. Well, this was released in 2017, and you bought one. I think when it first came out. I bought it in 2019, and I'm like, I'm gonna do something this one day. Yeah. One day. And then it was on the shelf. One and, day. And then like a couple weeks ago, or two weeks ago, you you brought it home because we were at the office. And you're like, oh yeah, the Teddy Ruxpin. So you brought it home. You had it in the box. Yeah. And you brought it back, and we're like, oh, that's cool. It has, like, these animatronic eyes and voice. And I was like, let's see, you know, what you can do with it. So, um, you know, you first up, you look up the iFixit, you know, um, teardowns. It's got this, this processor in it, and it can do, again, you know, the mouth moves, and there's these TFT displays for the eyeballs. I want to say that they borrowed the idea or were inspired by Phil B's eyeball code. Um, but what is really neat is on the back, next to the battery port, there's this micro USB slot. And the micro USB slot... Um, is you when you plug it in, it shows up at files. Um, but the way you're supposed to kind of use this is um, you download one of the apps. So I just took this, you know, screenshot. It it has low ratings because it doesn't really work anymore. Um, but there's a there was a Google uh, Play app for Android, and there's an uh, iOS app, and the app still kind of you did eventually get it working after like sort of kind of it kind of sort of maybe. Um, but the idea is that you would use the app, and it would. Um, you would connect to the teddy bear over Bluetooth, and then the storybook would appear on the screen. There's like a video from Animanga Plus, Any Any Manga Plus, which is the app developer. Um, the the toy was made by Wicked Cool Toys, but the app was done by Any Manga Plus. And when you connect, it syncs, and so like you can read the story on the um, instead of having a paper book, you would read the story on the tablet, and it would like follow along as you like, you know, when you press the next button, it would go to the next page and all that good stuff. Okay, so you plug it in um, to USB and it shows up as a disk drive with a folder called books. And initially it only has a couple, this is the one I just plugged in and it has all the stories, but initially it actually only had uh, three stories, I think, and the idle and intro bin. Intro bin is that first thing when you turn it on, it says, yeah. you know, hello, my name is Teddy Ruxpin, can you and I be friends? Idle is actually just the animation of the, when it's not, doing anything the eyes move back and forth or just like plays this idle animation and then the stories each are about 15 minutes long or whatever it's like five 15 minutes long and their songs and and they're pretty cool and everything don't get me wrong um you know you can uh get the songs um in case you ever lose them or maybe it did come with the songs you can get the songs from um internet archive somebody uploaded all of them or maybe the app gave them to you i don't remember the story but basically you can get the binary files here um and it has all all the stories all 15 stories but you can't like if you drag it off the sd card that's in the bear the, the micro usb port it doesn't like magically play them you have to unlock them by paying through the app and that's what's going to be eventually um not going to work i mean it works now but i, I think eventually it's not going to run on um, like we even saw on um, Android, you know, every once, every few years, they're like, we don't let you run old APKs anymore. You have to uh, force recompile them. And who knows if this company is going to do it. And then if you actually look for the company that made the toy, the website doesn't exist. I think they were purchased by another company. Anyways, like that's gone. I mean, like it's kind of cool when the domain doesn't even really exist. Like there's usually the SSL failure that happens um, when they don't renew their SSL certificate. Um, and then they they went past that. So they're just not even around anymore. Um, okay, but that's fine. You know, I keep Googling and, and there was um, a talk at DEF CON on dissecting and reversing during the smart pair. And I'm like, oh, perfect. Like, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to update the audio um, and the mouth movements. And I want to make my own story files because like the stories that come with it are cool. But like, I want to make my own stories. I think that would be neat if I was telling a story or like, you know, grandmother was telling a story, you were telling the story or like you had an AI uh version of you know some of uh, like some famous person telling a story or whatever like do deep fakes on the smart bear um that's no, okay it's gonna be mostly me telling the story 
Well, the the thing is, um, so a lot of people have these. Yeah. They're still available. Like I said, if if you wanna if you wanna go in and get one right now, because probably after we release all this stuff, um, you know, people will start to charge more on eBay. We can get them for eight bucks, but I think the there's a lot though. I'm not. I, I think I, I, pick one up if you want one. But I don't yeah, think it's the, the dream is to always have a animatronic toy that you can hack and mod. There's oh, like there's so many things that you can do with it, from it being an accessory for a cosplay thing, to um, just wanting all of it's so hard to do all of those things. Whether you're trying to three print it and do motors and like whatever it is, putting that all together, the injection molding, the battery. Um, having it even be safe. Yeah. You know, I just want something like double A batteries. It's a yeah. very well made, and you can you know, see the iFixit video or whatever. It's yeah. very well made. Okay. So, this presentation, there's also a video. Um, go to the file format of the binary. And this is really useful because, like, um, this group of people, Xenofax and Exploiters is a group, they, um, you know, figured out the, like, by messing with bytes, they figured out what each byte does. Um, and it basically said, like, hey, here's where the, um, the eyeball data lives and it's uncompressed and here's where like the file format and here's the audio data. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, I opened up the, um, the binaries that I've gotten. I'm like, yes, okay. It is the, it's the same format. That sounds cool. Um, in the talk, they mentioned releasing, you know, maybe some, uh, creation software at some point, but it was never released. So you're kind of, kind of starting from just, whatever was in the documentation in the presentation and recreating um, the extractor. And then once I have an extractor, like once I can get the data out, of course I can um, put data back in. Um, so I just started writing some Python code and it's like, you know, struct, unpack, look for the magic bytes, blah, 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 follow everything at ground. And um, getting the eyeball images out was pretty easy because they're just 128 by 128 raw RGB 565 which I'm super familiar with because all of our TFTs are RG565. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, this file format is like, I'm also an interesting study in uh, eyeballs on um, LCD screens. Yeah. So um, very nice. And I mean, the eyeballs also do this animation thing, which was not extracted, but I probably won't be creating the animations. Like the, they do like these little hard sparkle things. Anyways, um, the good news is that I just, you know, you gave me like this Adafruit logo, 128 by 128. I used Pillow, this Python image library, and you know, pasted that back into the eyeball code um, for the idle screen, and like, boom, you know, that worked. So that was that just showed like, okay, there's no like CRC. You can edit the file and put it back on. Um, you can you know inject and change the data without any issue. Okay, so the next issue is um, I want to do something with the audio. So the audio has this thing called the mark table at the beginning. So you see that there's like AU and that's like the, the you know, the, the magic bytes. And then there's a bunch of um, numbers that are like zeros and, and ones. And that sh that tells the bear, the chip running the bear, how to open the mouth for the audio file. Like what, when does it open the mouth at what point? Um, and that's with a timing table. And then after that, there's all these FFs. And then there's this beginning of the audio. So the audio is kind of two thirds down is the audio starting. And so... I was like, okay, you know, is this uncompressed audio um, and open it up in Audacity? And it's definitely not uncompressed. It's compressed audio, which doesn't surprise me too much um, because audio is really, really big. And uh, some of these audio files are 15 megabytes and they probably were like, look, maybe we'll transfer it over Bluetooth. We should uh, compress it in some way. So, um, you know, looking through the documentation in the DEF CON thing and also um, the chip itself is called the Sonics chip. This is called the Sonics Audio 32 format. And it's it, proprietary, it's not really documented. Um, I found a, you know, a couple projects, the project on the top half of the screen is someone who um, was hacking some like Japanese toy um, that used the same Sonics chipset and Audio 32 file format. And they used QMU to run the ROM of the toy and use that to decode audio. Like it literally just used the toy ROM as a, the firmware as a way to encode and, um, sorry, to decode the audio or maybe encode it as well. The only thing is that you need to have the ROM of the toy to run it. So that was kind of like a no, no go. And then at the bottom, you know, there was this other person, Zach, um, and they were like on the FF MPEG IRC channel. And they're like also kind of trying to do the same thing. And they were kind of researching the, the Sonics codec. So I actually just followed along with this like IRC chat 
And, you know, like, it was kind of fun because I was, like, back in time. This was, like, from 2021. And I was, like, watching, you know, they didn't know that, like, what was going to happen with COVID or something. I don't know. And um, got to watch this person kind of going through this audio 32 hacking. Um, also, like, looking up the data sheet. And then I Googled the data sheet and Googled files, blah, blah, blah. It's basically a lot of Googling and, like, GitHub searching, et cetera. And I found, um, and I'll document all this, you know, but in the end, I found um, this repo that had the SDK for this, the Sonics chipset, and it included this libsnx audio.so linked library file. It also had some code that you could run that would encode or decode audio. And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Finally, it's like, I've got the library file. I've got some code. All I'll do is compile it. Um, okay, but the only problem is, is that when you look at the file type for that libsnx audio audio32, it's not x86, it's ARM. Uh, okay, no, not a problem. I went to ARM. There's no x86 version, so I'm gonna have to run it on like a Raspberry Pi. But I have Raspberry Pis, so not a big deal. But then actually, I ran on the Raspberry Pi. I didn't get a quick screenshot of it, but it doesn't work with glibc. It needs uclibc, and uclibc is what's used on like embedded Linux setups that are minimal, which makes sense. This could be like some you know, yeah, product uh, that uses the Sonics um, audio stuff and it's like a small device or a toy it's not going to be running like a full-fledged debian install it's going to be running something like build root so i've always been wanting to learn how to use build root build root lets you build these automatically build these very simple small um, linux installations for embedded linux it's not like a full debian install it's very minimal uh lots of things are missing like wget but worked my way around it got it running and it's all on the Raspberry Pi ARM computer. Tried to compile this code, it compiles, and it doesn't run. It fails. Oh. And it says, I can't, it's not succeeding in opening the codec. Okay, what does that mean? I try all these different things. And I'm, I try every argument. Like, I spam the argument list, and it's just, just it will absolutely not run. I'm like, there's something going on here that's causing it to fail. And then I'm like, well, you know what? If you go back to uh, this, no, sorry, this one. You'll notice it's got debug info and it's not stripped. Cool. That means it's prime for Ghidra, which is a reverse <laughs> engineering decompilation tool released by the NSA. Really good tool. And I actually did an amazing job. If you look at the code on the right that is decompiled from the ARM assembly on the left, like it's completely readable. Yeah. Like it's com it's, it is like code. That's scary. Like, it's it's like, really yeah. scary. Yeah, it's like, well, it's very good and so <laughs> you can actually see what's going on it's opening dev mem um you look oh. up the sysconf it's memory mapping um one page worth of data and then it's it's reading it and it's trying it's it's reading something from the registers on the chip and it's checking it against a value f8 and i don't know what it is and it's like it's some register value and i guess it's never used again i don't know if it's like a security check or if it's like verifying you're on the right version i don't know but what's really cool is with Ghidra, you can hot patch. So that check where it returns zero if it's not on the right chipset or if it doesn't get that right memory map value. I just changed it from a not equal to an equal, and then it just like totally ran. Um, the only problem is that the audio that came out, you know, I tried encoding and decoding, and the audio was not intelligible. Like I tried decoding the audio from the bear, and it didn't come out right. I don't know why, but I was kind of messed with it for a few hours, and I was like, not really working out. And then I was like looking around and everyone keeps saying, oh, the audio 32 codec, it's just G7221. Everyone's like, it's just G7221. Okay, cool. Download some G7221 encoders, decoders, 0.1, 0.1 annex C, non annex, not C, not one. Tried all of them. None of them were able to decode the audio. Um, there's something, you know, it's, it's somehow modified from G7221. Anyways, I was kind of like messing around. I was like, I'm not really getting anywhere. I can always go back to that decompilation code and try to like recompile it for like a processor I know or like see what's different with G7721, you know, audio codec. But I kind of was like, this isn't really going anywhere. Okay, so I kept looking around and then I found a different library called Lib Audio 32 Encoder. Ah, and then I found PDJ Stone, who is like the hero in this story. <laughs> this is like the hero's story, like, you know, the like the standard um, archetype of the hero. Yeah. At the, the the darkest corner there, you know, an angel comes down and gives the hero or like some mystical beast. Hanging on the edge of the cliff. Yeah, tells them like, oh, here's the sword you need to defeat the dragon. And you're like, you know, you're saved by um, some outside deus ex machina. 
anyways, this is P, P. D. J. Stone. Great, thank you. Wrote this Cloud Pets toy um, encoder so you could play audio on this Cloud Pets toy, which is a unicorn that doesn't have a moving mouth but uses the same Sonics tool uh, uh, tool chain and chip. It doesn't, it, and you send the audio over Bluetooth. So he, he uses a web Bluetooth thing to send the audio over. You don't drag it over on a um, micro SD card. Instead, you you do this lib audio 32. And here's where he's actually very smart. This person was quite smart. They took the um, APK for Android and you, it's a zip. So you unzip it and he grabbed the um, library from inside that. So I didn't realize you could do. So cool. Uh, I looked and yes, in fact, in the APK for um the APK that he's got, the APK from um, the Android app for the Teddy Ruxpin is the same thing, lib audio32 encoder and decoder.sl. Um, it's also available in like a zip in one of those SDK things. And I'm like, okay, and you can even see like the AU file header thing, the sample rate. Okay, everything's matching up. This looks like it's the right file format. It's named audio32 and it's got that correct header. Um, but then, um, the only yeah oh wait you know what i didn't uh send you the next oh no i didn't send you 23 and 24. oh i must have forgotten or maybe you can check so i forget uh the images oh they're gone oh no i didn't okay no because this is where we 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 stop um so this is kind of where i was this morning so the good news is that this um his code actually does run but it only runs on um i did i did it was like okay i'm gonna run android on a raspberry pi installed android on a raspberry pi computer because again i needed arm 32 tried to run it and it said you can't use anything with api 23 or higher because the linked library uses relocatable text um you can go to us because oh, yeah yeah you don't want to just leave it on the screen for a well i mean if i want to read this code but i well, I might i have my nexus 7. so um so tried running the python code on raspberry pi it said you can't be using apk 23 or higher apk 22 or lower is android 5.1 so i need a device that can run android 5.1 and that's when i grabbed my nexus 7. um everyone has a nexus 7. they were given out for free basically in 2022 yeah. um and it even says like hi you're running android 5.1 so i pulled this out wiped it cleaned it up charged it which takes overnight don't forget to charge you know it basically runs out of battery in like 25 minutes and run termax and actually within like 20 minutes i was able to encode the audio this was like it only took me like 30 hours to get to this point one of 20 30 hours but i did get there um so now unfortunately you know the only way i've got right now to do the audio encoding and decoding is um if you've got something running arm 32 based android 5.1 but i yeah, think that, ideas. i think now that i've got it working i have this golden path because i like i can change the audio i can go back and i think i can probably get that android yeah there's a 64-bit uh, app there's a 64-bit app which may have libraries so at least you don't need 32-bit um it might be maybe it's recompiled with non-relocatable texts um, I didn't think to even look into it. And I was like, I was like, oh, maybe there's a different, like, I was like, oh, maybe there's a 64 bit. And there's an app and it's like never mentioned anywhere. Um, it was on the YouTube for the mm -hmm. anime manga because I was looking at their anime manga, the YouTube, and they mentioned, like, oh, yeah, we released a 64 bit version of this app like two years ago. So I just got that. And hopefully with that, we'll be able to run the code on a modern operating system so you can generate the audio. Yeah. And um, we'll do a question here because I asked the same question. Did you consider using Android VM? Wow, yes. did I try that? <laughs> yes. yes, there's a reason it didn't work though. It doesn't work. So if you're using the Android, well, you can't use an Android VM on your desktop, which I tried. I skipped that because it was like such a failure. Um, first off, I couldn't even get Android 5. There's an Android 5.1 build for MMU, but it just didn't even like, I wouldn't, you know, turn off Hyper-V because you have to turn on, like at some point in a project, you're turning on or off Hyper-V. Ran MMU with the Android 5.1. It did, doesn't even boot. But even if it did, um, I don't think that MMU is compiled for 32-bit. And I, the x86 library wouldn't work. It was kind of like, there's a lot of pieces that would have to fit. Like, remember, it's not just, um, you have to be running Android. You have to be running Android 5.1. And it has to be 32-bit. 
and it has to be on an ARM core. And Jepler tried QEMU to run Android, and he said actually um, he tried. He, you know, he got to the point where you run the code, and it dies with the CPU um, op exception. So it's like there's something in this file that's just totally horrible, and that QEMU doesn't even support. So it is like not a yeah. thing. This is like a software version of my visit to the toy fair. It's like, yeah. And like you have to go, it's like you have to travel back in time. Like let's travel back in time to 2017 in this landscape of all these things. But the good news, I know it's went on for like 20 minutes, but the good news is um, I, now that I've got a golden path, like the way I reverse engineer is I get the final thing. Yeah. And then now that I've got it working from beginning to end, I can like make it easier. Like I'll, I'll attack it from both sides. It and works. then a lot of toys use this chipset. Um, so it might be handy for reverse engineering yeah. a variety of, of toys. So it's happening. It's just like I only got it like working in like this morning at 11. Yeah, such a long time ago. My little hacker, my little hacker, building with you is magical. My little hacker, my little hacker, it's time to build.